folks. So this video is going to be um, me finishing painting herring, blah, 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 uh, my new werewolf. Um, I finished the white werewolf recently and the brown one I did first, and that one sold. This one is going to be the brown werewolf because I need to make one for mass test. So what I have here, let me go over some stuff. Um, these are the eyeballs that I just cast the other day. They're just unpainted. They're 28 millimeter plastic castings that I cast and I will paint them by hand. They'll be like the red scary eyes. I should show the material I used to put to cast with those. Let me get that. From the Polytech Company in Eastern Pennsylvania, Easy Flow 60 liquid plastic. It's, it's, um, you mix it by, I mix it by volume, equal parts, mix it, it takes about a couple minutes to mix up and then you pour it in your mold, in your silicone mold, and you get nice white castings. Here, here are the teeth, werewolf teeth. Now, werewolf teeth. Um, these, I bought castings of an actual wolf jaw uh, online, and then I took the casting and I sculpted the tongue with wet clay, and then I made a silicone mold of the casting. So I, I tried for this mask to actually use real castings of wolf teeth. I changed, the, I manipulated the teeth a little bit and added the tongue, changed them, fixed them up a little bit, make them a little more um, dramatic looking. I don't know, slight changes, but the biggest change was adding the tongue. Uh, anyway, so these are cast, these will be painted with acrylics and glued into the mask. So here's the mold and it's foam filled and I'm gonna take it out. Now, hopefully we have a good casting and um, I can paint it. And this video will be, the video I'm gonna make that you will be watching is not gonna be literally every moment of me finishing this, because would, that would be like a 10 hour video. The hair alone on this is six hours to apply. So it's gonna be little cuts here and there. Um, anyway, I'm gonna remove, the, let me take my wedding ring off because I don't wanna put my hand in the mold and you don't put something metal in a mold. I don't wanna squirt my mold. Anyway, this is tricky because there are some, I probably end up using, um, speeding up the video because the, the back half of the mold, the ears are completely on the back of the mold. I wanted to keep this mold very simple. Instead of making the mold, the clay wall running on the ear, would have been more difficult and take more time. And I was like, oh, I just want to make the mold a few weeks ago. Plus, this thing is going to be, have so much hair on it that even if I got, and I have a good seam line, but even if I had a bad seam line, you'd never see it anyway because the hair would be covering it. That's the great thing about werewolf masks. There's so much hair that you can have sloppy seams. I don't even, I, for this mask, I'm going to trim the seams down to the, the minimum. I'm not even going to blend them and get rid of the, the, the hint of a seam because you're never going to see it. It's just, you know, put your time and effort into the things you're going to see, not things that are going to be hidden, in my opinion. Anyway, let me take this thing out. All right, so I already uh, got up. I gotta just reach in and loosen up those ears. This is the third casting of this mask, and it's tricky getting it out. But the first two came out good. Werewolves are different. All right, now I gotta carefully move the face.
Okay. You don't want to pull too hard. It will release itself. Just a little bit of pressure. The nose is coming out. Okay, the mouth just released the jaw. Now the nose is the last thing. It's still, you know, you gotta be gentle. It will come out, just put a little bit of pressure and it will loosen, release itself. I'm tugging, not even tugging, I'm just pulling gently and letting it slowly release. You don't want to brush these things and rip them. Should be the last bit right here. It's the upper mouth. Because there's a lot of undercuts in this. Oh, it's starting to come out completely. There we go, and it's out. So, yeah, looks like another really good pour. I'll tell you, this is the third pull from this mold, and every one of them has been a really good. So this is good. All right, let me move this mold out of the way and uh, put him on a stand and let him air out. So, let me move these. So this is, you know, the seams, which will be trimmed later. They're not bad at all. And honestly, I mean, I'll cut them down with little scissors, but the wear, the placement of these seams, which, I mean, I could just leave these because the hair is going to be covering them anyway. I mean, it's minimal. I mean, I can just like literally, here, wait. I mean, that's really all I need to do because it's going to be covered in hair. You get the idea. I mean, you've done this. If you're making, if you make masks, you know what I'm doing here. You know, but I'll just trim them down later with these scissors. But since this is the first pull from this mold, there's no clay residue left in the mold to get on that. So it doesn't even need really any cleaning. And there's no imperfections, except for trimming these little pieces of the seams down. I mean, nothing really to do. Just let it sit out till tonight. Just give it some air um, and then paint. So that's it. So, you know, here, I'll show you this. So these, here's something I'll do. Um, 
So the teeth, the way, let me put my wedding ring on before I forget. I don't want to lose that. Um, the teeth were, when I cast, before I sculpted anything, I made the teeth. I bought the castings, I took some clay, made revisions, added the tongue, made silicone molds of those, and then cast these. And when I cast these, this is, you know, the first set I cast, I literally put them in the sculpture and sculpted around it so that way these would fit the mold, the mold, the mask. So as you can see, these teeth fit right in that jaw, lower jaw, and they fit right in the mouth. I mean, they'll be glued in and painted and everything, but you can see, it's not perfect, but they'll be, you know, but they fit in there, you know, and so this is what, you know, I'm not going to stick the eyeballs in the, you know, in the eye cavities, but now yeah, what the hell, I'll do it just for, for the sake of the video. Eyeball. There. It'll look a lot better when it's painted and haired. But trust me. Right now he just looks like a very albino, blind dog. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm painting um, Far Gone paint, which is the brown uh, color of um, Nightshade's paint, um, to the mask with a chip brush. All the areas that are gonna be covered in hair, but basically I'm not gonna be painting inside the ear, the snout, the, fit, the brow, the front of the jaw, under the jaw, in the mouth. That's not gonna be painted. I'm just gonna do everything else by hand. So the reason I do this, painting the everything but the inner ears and the um, front of the face brown is because the area I painted brown is gonna be completely covered in hair. You're not gonna see anything that is brown here. You're not gonna actually see that latex when this mask is finished. It's gonna be covered in different shades of brown hair. And the reason I painted painted brown with a chip brush is um, if there are any spots on the mask when it's finished that the hair is maybe a little thin in some places or maybe I, there's a small section that I didn't get enough hair on. If it's if the latex if the mask itself before I put the hair on it is already dark brown, you're not going to see where I maybe missed a spot. There aren't going to be probably many areas like that, but just in case, it's good to have a dark color that matches the same color of the hair to start with. It's almost like when you see, um, you know, old men with uh, that uh, are balding and they had that spray color, the spray on their bald spot, it's the same idea. So I start off by just painting the dark brown on the mask in the area where the hair is gonna be really thick. So that is done for now. All right, the next step is I mixed up um, some paint here. This is like a light beige. It's 10 milliliters of a paint called uh, Creeping Flesh Dark and three milliliters of uh, Far Gone, which is, the, which is this brown paint, but it's lighter. And I'm gonna spray on the face and in the, in, in the, in the ears. And uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. All right. Beige paint is now on the face. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna airbrush uh, the same brown that I used for this. Why is this not going on? Um, very subtle, I'm gonna basically like mist it over the face. Um, now that the lighter brown beige was put on and dried already. So I'm gonna just do it from far away, full 100% pressure on the uh, compressor, but very 
just from far away, just give it a little bit of a tint. Not much. Inner ear too. I'm not going right up close. I don't need to do that. I don't remember to do up from underneath. Okay, the next step here is I'm gonna take a fine pointed brush and I'm gonna take, again, some brown paint, same as this color, and I'm just gonna dry brush it into some of the folds, some of the, on the face, around the eyes a little bit in the, um, uh, what do you call it, crow's feet, all that. Maybe a little bit on the folds and the um, grooves in the inner ear. Subtle, not, nothing too heavy, just to create the illusion of a little more depth. All right, well, I painted the uh, brown, you know, it's subtle, but in all the folds and in the ear. And I also um, painted a paint called Skinned, which is a red, in the inner mouth. So I'm gonna let this dry, and then we'll do another step. All right, now that the, the, the mask is pretty much painted, um, all the color that I'm gonna be, that I airbrushed, that I did with small handheld brushes is done. The last step in this mask is I do, um, I take some black acrylic paint and I put some in a big cup and I put, a, it's mostly water and I mix it up with a chip brush and this is something I started doing. Other people, um, there's a term for it where they like wipe on paint and then they wipe, they put on paint and then they wipe it off with a sponge to get it in the grooves and kind of like a, a wash. I do the same thing, but I do it slightly differently. Um, and I use acrylic paint. Sometimes I do it, use a dark brown paint, sometimes black. For this, I'm doing black. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm mixing up this paint. It's very watery. And I'm gonna apply it. I'll put it on the whole head, but really the face where the skin is gonna be showing through is the most important spots. But I'm gonna just um, apply it with a chip brush. Generously. And uh, I'm just gonna paint, paint, paint the mask. Just gonna glop it on. I have a piece of cardboard on the, you know, my, my work table is so old and stained, it doesn't matter if I get drip all over the place. But I'm gonna paint inside, turn this so you can see. Put this light over here more. Inside the ear too. Just glop it on there. Let me sit underneath so I can see better. You know, I'm, I, this is not to be neat. I'm just covering the surface and the inner ear. Um, it's not really important to do the, uh, the dark brown where the hair is gonna be because you're not gonna see this. But let me just continue what I'm doing. I'm using it to, I feel like Bob Ross making, at least make, made happy little trees because I'm just applying it generously to the mask. Make 
sure to get underneath things, underneath the upper lips, snout. And you can put it in the mouth too, it's fine. Because remember, inside that mouth, it's gonna have those teeth glued in anyway, so you're not gonna see it. You're really only gonna see the back of the mouth, but. Okay, that's pretty much the entire thing covered. Um, let me do a close up now. All right, so I'm just gonna, you know, some gets in the ears, so it's gonna dump it out on the table here, shake it out a bit. Okay, now. So if you look, let me turn this light. See, the paint, let's see if I can zoom in a bit here. All right, now I'm gonna take my spray bottle here. And I'm gonna spray the whole thing. inner ears, everything. Not a lot of water, just a little bit. And I'm gonna pick this up and dump it out again. happened is you can see let me get a pen here some brush to point out that that black acrylic paint has settled in some of those sculpted area those textured areas and even though there's going to be hair on a lot of this the hair on the face is not going to be as thick as on the on the bulk of the head and all those little dark areas where that black acrylic paint has settled, it's gonna, it adds a nice organic texture. Now there are some pools of paint in areas like here, which all I'm gonna do is take a piece of paper towel and I'm gonna stick it in and it'll just soak it right up. That would dry naturally, but I don't want, you know, it'll dry quicker because I don't use a hair dryer or anything to dry this. I want this, this wet acrylic wash to dry naturally. So it might take an hour or so. See, I'm just gonna pick up these little pools. It's little details like this, that I'm, this wash of acrylic paint, that really add a lot to the character. It's, it's su subtle. Lots of subtle little details that you do in painting. Um, they may not look like much or when you're doing them, but they all add up. You know, I don't like to paint a mask a big, you know, for me to paint a mask in an hour or two, it's not enough time, especially, you know, because you can't just slap paint on like you're painting a house. I mean, you're painting, trying to make something look like it's a living thing if you're, if you're making a mask. And, you know, detail and texture is important. See, I'm going to do the same thing because water will pool in these ears. It's a little bit, but this ear, oh, yeah, see, there's a lot of excess paint in here. So I'll just get that. Just pull it right out. I might need a little more paper towel. Also some in the eye, inner eye sockets as well. And what I wanna do is this is pretty much, now when this dries, I'll come down like an hour and this paint will have dried. And I'll look at it and I'll think, do I need to repeat what I just did again? I might want it a little, a little uh, more of what I just did. We'll see. 
and even the inside of the mouth. All right, let's see. Let me zoom back out. Okay. So a little bit of water in that ear still. Okay. I think we are good. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything. think we are good so and I got the inside of the eyes all right so that's it so I'm gonna let that dry all right that's dry let me just get this sharper I think this looks pretty good. I think, uh, it's left a nice, organic, lived-in look on the skin. So, the only thing left to paint on this mask is the nose, which I'm not going to do now anyway, and uh, the lip a little bit here. All right, so I painted the nose black. I paint, I dry brushed a little bit of black on the lower lip. Um, for the nose, I use a paint called uh, Fast Color. This is made for, um, it's more of a uh, paint that's used for slot cars and model cars and things. It's, it goes on nice and dark. It's very uh, concentrated. Um, but I usually use it for werewolf noses. So this mask is completely painted. Also dry brushed a little bit of black around the eye openings to give it a little bit of darkness. So this is done and, uh, I'm going to let that nose dry a little bit and then I'm going to airbrush a little bit of gloss over it. And that's it for the painting of the mask. All right. I just, uh, airbrushed some Liquitex gloss over it, uh, especially on the areas where there's gonna be minimal hair. So the ear, inner ear, the top of the snout, the face, you know. So this is ready for hair, but I think before I do hair, I'm gonna paint the teeth, glue them in, paint the eyes too. So hair will wait another day or two. All right, so now it's time to paint the teeth. Uh, I'm going to paint them with acrylic paint. Um, you know, just regular teeth, pinkish red gums, off white yellowy teeth, and uh, the tongue and the teeth and gums, and then the upper teeth there. All right, so here are the painted teeth and gums upper teeth, lower teeth. So they will go like that. But. They're very clean looking. He looks like he just came from the dentist. So I have some um, raw umber, watery acrylic paint, which I'm going to paint over the, and these are just painted with acrylics. Um, I'm gonna take this chip brush and um, just basically cover them with this paint to make them look, again, worn and dirty and lived in. So I wanna put the phone down so I can do this carefully. All right, so now that that was done, I'm gonna let them dry. And I'll probably end up, when this, when that watery paint dries, um, do, it, do it again just to give them a little bit of a more organic look so they're not so perfectly clean. You know, little bits of brown get in there and uh, yeah, it just gives it a more lived in look. So I'm gonna let these dry. Okay, these teeth are painted. I think they look pretty cool. They're nice and uh, 
Looks like they have some, you know, they're appropriately yellowed and stained. So now I'm going to uh, paint a little gloss acrylic over them just to give them a shiny coat. And when that dries, I'm going to put them in the mouth. All right, I'm going to put the teeth into the mask. I'm going to put the lower teeth in first and epoxy them in. And then on one set set, I'm going to put the upper teeth in and turn it upside down. You'll see. So I'm going to place these in here. They should fit really good. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so now the teeth are in, I'm going to uh, mix up the epoxy and I'm just gonna epoxy with a small brush. Make sure it's getting in so that it stays, they stay in place. And epoxy just makes something look like it's drool anyway, so even if I get a little bit on the lip, that's all right. And there's going to be blood on the inside the mouth anyway. But this is going to make it... The teeth stay in there. And the epoxy is going to run down into the mouth anyway, so it's not going to... It's not like thick, it's going to... It's runny. Those teeth are glued in. Move this back. Now I'm going to take the upper teeth and put them in. Make sure they're lined up correctly. So what I need to do now, let me lower this. Okay. So the teeth are in and they're lined up, everything is good. But to glue them, to put the epoxy in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the mask upside down that and I'm going to put these weights on either side to keep it sitting up so now I can because you know gravity is your friend and uh I'm gonna mix the epoxy up and I'll be able to put it in and it'll run. I don't want it to run. If I put it in, if I put the epoxy in, if the mask was upright, then it would drool down. And I want it to go, I don't want it to be showing on the gums. I want it to settle. So I'm gonna mix up epoxy right now. Um, so his teeth are in. Anyway, so the next step, really the only things to do left on this whole mask is the hair, obviously, and on the eyeballs, and putting blood on the teeth. But the blood on the teeth is the last thing. Um, what I want to do is, 
I'm gonna start herring now, and I'm gonna do his ears first. The reason you do the ears first is because years ago I saw a picture of Rick Baker from the 70s herring his famous werewolf mask that was used in the cantina in Star Wars and in that photo he had done the hair on the ears but not the rest of the mask so I thought oh Rick Baker does the ears first that must mean I should do the ears first and it makes sense because if you start herring, usually if you start herring a werewolf you, or anything, you start at the bottom and you work your way up. But if you start herring that way, it's difficult if you already have hair glued onto the mask to get into an area that's going to be sticking outward and going out. So I think it's, it makes sense to do the ears first and then start at the bottom and work your way around. To me, it makes sense. Anyway, that's what I'm going to do. All right, well, that took about an hour to hair the ears. Now, as you see, it's very bushy, but the way that I apply hair is you put it on thick, you let the glue dry, and then you thin it out. You'll see when, um, as this video progresses and more hair is applied to this werewolf, it's gonna be extremely bushy but when the glue dries and I style the hair and I comb it out, a lot of this hair is going to be thinned out and it'll look much, much better when it's finished. But for now, I have to go to work now. So I took about an hour before leaving for, getting ready for work to do the ears. More to come. So as you, as you, as you can see, things have changed. <laughs> um, I haired the ears. <coughs> I started heading hair to the bottom of the mask, the werewolf. Um, the way it works is you work your way from the bottom up. The f face, the snout, the brow, all this is going to be done last, and that will be punched. So I'm going to work my way from the bottom up. Also the back up. And it may look ridiculous and silly now, but you'll see. All right, so I've been working on this, putting, applying hair. I'm stopping now, I'm taking a break. I still have to get to the back of the head. Um, see, I'm using dark brown, more of a reddish brown, pale brown. I'm using a variety of different hairs. This makes it look a little more interesting. Now, of course, this looks ridiculous right now. It almost looks like a lion. Um, I always like to put on hair very thick, glue it on, very full. When the glue is dry, and I you like to give something like this a 24 hours to completely dry, I will run through, uh, run through it with my fingers and um, a toothbrush and everything, and I will be removing, as you'll see in the video, um, how do I do it? I, it's hard to describe this, but when the mask is done, it's gonna, the hair is going to look good, but it's very full now. When the glue is dry, I will thin it out and style it, and you'll see. You'll see later in the video. And the way you apply the hair is you, you put some glue down. And you, I use Mod, Mod Podge Matte which is a slow drying glue and you know you basically you put some glue down and you take the, some hair a little bit which i cut to have a nice edge and you basically place it and then you glue over the edge i use a fan brush and you glue over the edge and you have to build up. It's almost like um, shingles on a roof. You know how one shingle goes down and the other shingle goes down on top of that one, covers a little bit. You start at the bottom and you work your way up. And that's how you, and it takes hours. Okay, this is pretty much completely haired. 
Um, I still have to do a little bit more hair uh, here. I'm gonna bring it down to about there. I'll do that a little bit later. I'm taking a break now. But you can see it's very bushy, but that's gonna change once the glue is dry. Now, I've used four different types of hair here. Look at the different colors. It's hard to tell in this light. I've got a dark brown, more of a reddish brown, more of a tan. Then I go back to the dark and I mix it up a little bit. The hair on that, well, the fourth color will be, there'll be a gray, like a salt and pepper that I'll use punched on the muzzle, on the brow, around the sides of the jaw and all that. Um, anyway, taking a break. Okay, except for the face that's kind of have punched hair, this thing is completely haired. Now, of course, it looks ridiculous because it's not styled and there's a lot of hair on there. But as you will see, when it's done, it's gonna look really cool. But for now, I'm gonna give this more time to dry. All the hair in there has to dry before I style it. I have been painting some eyeballs. Let's take a look at these. Too much glare. Anyway, got some werewolf eyeballs happening here. Almost done. I believe these eyes are finished. Whoa. These eyes are done. So I'm going to let them dry, then I'm going to mix up a little epoxy and make them look really shiny. So you can see by removing with my hand uh, hair and styling it, I'm getting it to a place where it looks much more like a werewolf. Now, keep in mind also, I still have to punch hair in the face because right now it just ends there, which looks ridiculous, like he shaved his face off. So I'm gonna have to put the eyeballs in. Um, but right now I'm gonna take care of getting all the excess hair like styling the shape of the ears so that you know 
but I still have a little bit of work to do on this. And then when this is done, I'll probably hairspray it a little bit and then I have to go to work soon. Tonight when I come home, I'll punch hair. And after I punch hair, I will insert the eyeballs. And then when it's all completely done, I'll do the blood in the uh, mouth. See, even just punching a little bit of hair on the brow and putting the eyes in starts to really make it start to really come to life. Still a lot more hair to punch. And there he is. He's on the uh, in the display with everybody else. So there is um, basically how I make this werewolf. Hope you found this video entertaining. There's the white version. And uh, that's about it. Back to making monsters. See you all at Mask Fest 2024.